Alright. Amazing Spider-Man 139. We are going back to the 70s. With the first appearance of Smokey Bear. Thought this would tie in well enough to yesterday's video. And a long time ago someone asked me. Someone requested. I look at Spider-Man's with Andrew Rossart. So all these years later. That person can finally get their request fulfilled. We have got a Jill Can cover. Smokey Bear. Really nice cover. I was preparing to mourn about the condition of this copy, but... I have had it for upwards of ten years. And I've read it about five or six times. It is the condition you would expect for a comic from back then that I have read a few times over. So... Here is our Andrew Ross art, right here. He is pretty much the big Spider-Man artist of the Bronze Age. I cannot remember how many issues he does, but if you pick up a random issue of Amazing Spider-Man, numbered in the 100s, it's a good chance to be drawn by Andrew Ross. Where is Spider-Man at the minute? I don't mean physically. I mean where is his title and his character at in this moment? Well, we are about a year and change after the death of Emma Stone. We have had the first appearance of The Punisher recently. Spider-Man's arch-enemy is currently the Jackass. Peter Parker's college professor who was in love with Emma Stone and blames Spider-Man for her death. In fact, the Jackass and Punisher share a first appearance. This is written by Gary Conman, and I don't usually like Gary Conman, but I profess I like this. And I do like a couple of issues from this period. They are not original, they are not game changers, they are just thoroughly bearable superhero stories upon there bearable cause of the bad guy my nemesis would kill for a pun that good calling a comic about a bloke in a bear costume bearable I did do a wellness check on him recently by which I mean I looked at his twitter and I was greeted with another of his jokes that made me question if life is worth living. Talking of the Wild West. I don't know why he began with that. It's not in follow up to anything. He just begins with talking of the Wild West. The girlfriend of the famous US general from... The 7th Cavalry Regiment, who died at the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Well, you might not know this, but she used to go on sunbeds. That's right, Custa's Lass Tanned. Get it? You might not get it. He spent so long trying to establish George Custer without using his name that it fundamentally doesn't work as a coherent joke. It is the opposite of a one-liner because there is a fucking gigantic description of who Custer is to avoid using his name 
in the setup. Based on this response, maybe you should explain that one later by the door. I am very easily distracted and obsessed by how awful his jokes are. Spider-Man is looking for somewhere to live. He is looking for an apartment. And what we have here is actually quite significant in terms of Spider-Man mythology. We have the first appearance of his Chelsea apartment. This is where he moves into. And this is where he lives. This is where he remains all the way up until Amazing Spider-Man issue 300. Oh, the memories he has in this apartment. He got married while living there. He graduated college. He was moon-dragoned by Ursula. All his happiest memories happened in this Chelsea apartment. We also have the first appearance of Mrs Muggins. His gruff and nasty landlady slash superintendent. Super Nintendo Muggins. This apartment... 410, I think is the street number. It might not be. I might have pulled that number out of my arse, but... I would like to think my autism applies to numbers as well. I'd love to be a Rain Man sort. I'm probably off by one. This apartment has featured... There was a bonus pin-up in Amazing Spider-Man Annual 13 that gave us a look at his apartment layout. Radars wrote in and pointed out that it was wrong. So then, two years later, in Amazing Spider-Man Annual 15, we got a more accurate and corrected view of his apartment. What other YouTubers are going to give you this level of depth about a very specific living quarters for Spider-Man. This issue isn't about apartments though. It is an issue about a man in a bear costume. One of my favourite bad guys. That is what I say about most of the bad guys that are simply men in animal costumes. I swear I am not a furry. Smokey Bear, he is attacking the Daily Planet newspaper officers. He has come to get revenge on J.K. Jonah Jamer Simmons. So we get to see some of Smokey Bear trashing the Daily Planet building. Some good little comedy here with J.K. Jonah Jamer Simmons poking his head out of his office to see what the racket is and then retreating. If my nemesis is taking notes, this is funnier than a very, very clunky pun about Custer's last stand. This is Smokey Bear's first appearance. His origin is that he is a wrestler. Well, he was a wrestler. But his career was ruined by J.K. Jonah Jamer Simmons, who wrote a smear piece about him, similar to what he writes about Spider-Man. Decent little contrast. Now he's done with it. But it is a nice analogue that never gets any play. Spider-Man saves J. 
J.K. Jonah Jamer Simmons from Fallen to His Death when Smokey Bear oyed him out the window. Oyd means throw. I think oyd is Geordie. Spider Man vs. Smokey Bear. Really fun. Good action. Great little bad guy. He is a strong man in a bear suit. What more do you want from a bad guy? Maybe what you want is a basically pointless double page spread of Smokey Bear thwacking Spider Man around by his leg. A lot of readers act like Smokey Bear is a really low tier villain, that he is rubbish and that he's a joke. But they are overlooking the fact that he beat Spider Man in his first appearance. He is just a violent wrestler in a furry suit, but by God, he is a violent wrestler in a furry suit that beats Spider Man. I'll mention it here just for the sake of someone who only watches this video. Smokey Bear joins the Thunderballs very briefly. Everything I like tends to come back to Thunderballs somehow. So afterwards, Spider-Man, he follows Smokey Bear using a spider tracer. And he chooses to investigate as Peter Parker rather than Spider-Man. But he has been led into a trap. And Smokey Bear is in league with the Jackass. If you are looking forward to the next issue explaining why the Jackass is working with Smokey Bear or why Smokey Bear is working with the Jackass, you best not buy the next issue. This was Amazing Spider-Man 139, the earliest issue of Spider-Man I have. Amazing Spider-Man anyway. I think I have a Spider-Man team-up from before this. The one with Satan's son. Although Spider-Man's not in that. I rate this one... Oh, I like it. I forgot to say I like it. Some people will think it is generic and bland. But I think it is fun. Until the last couple of pages try to make it into... A grander, bigger, ongoing story with the Jackass. I'll give it seven cavalry regiments up.